Hello. Hello. Hi, Patrick. How are you doing tonight? I'm good. Thank you. Let's, um, before we officially start, I guess it's time to say cheers already. Uh, exactly. Let's <laughs> raise our glasses. Absolutely. I think for everyone who's already here, we can see that people are joining the webinar at the moment. We're going to wait a little bit and then we're going to have our official kickoff. What are you drinking, by the way, Karina, in the, in the light of tonight's um, cocktail team? That's true. For cocktails, Corona and Capes, I thought I'd make my favorite drink. It's an old fashioned whiskey based, very delicious. What about you? Um, I'm drinking a tin basil. Now I have to pay attention. It's smash, not bash. <laughs> Usually say bash. So it's a um, tin based drink um, with basil and lemon. Very refreshing summary. Nice. Perfect. Fits to the uh, season as well. Yes. So cheers again to everybody that just arrived. Yes. We're happy you're joining. What do you, shall we get started? What do you think? I guess it's time. I think we should kick it off. So everyone who's here, um, welcome to our Cocktails, Corona and Capes webinar. Um, Hello, some of you already found the chat on the right side. That's wonderful. Hello. <laughs> um, basically, the name pretty much gives away what we would like to talk about tonight in a relaxed atmosphere with drinks in our hands. We'd like to give you a deeper insight in how we as the Salma crew, but also how Salma's algorithm manages your money. And we will also definitely talk about this acronym in the title, CAPES. We're going to go in depth into what this is later on. My name is Karina. I'm part of the Summer Finance crew. And my job today is to lead you, our attendees, and our, my co-presenters through this webinar. So right now, it's a little bit time um, for technical details before we get started with the very interesting um, parts of tonight. So the webinar is planned to last around 45 minutes to one hour. Our program is pretty packed, so um, this means we are not going to have a live Q&A session at the end, but uh, you found the chat on the right side. You can definitely um, talk to us. Every message you send there is private, so only we as the moderators can see them. But our colleague Niklas will be there and online throughout the whole webinar and will try to answer your questions on the go. And in case you have any in-depth questions about your personal investments or accounts, feel free to post them there as well. If there's not enough time, we're going to reach out to you via email later. And last but not least, if you have to leave early today, that's of course absolutely fine. We will also email the recordings of the webinars to everyone. So let's get started with more interesting and fun parts. I have the pleasure to introduce my co-hosts now. First and foremost, Patrick Shea, our CEO and co-founder of Selma is joining me tonight. Hi, Patrick. Hi, Karina. Pleasure to be here. It really is. A uh, little bit about you. You've been working in finance, basically your whole life, working uh, life. My prof oh, almost <laughs> my whole professional life, at least, yeah. And you were also a financial analyst um, before you founded Salma Finance, and here you're also responsible, of course, for our investment strategy. Yes, that's correct. That's perfect. And then we will have our wild card, wild card join later, our financial expert, uh, Stefan Jacklin. He's going to join and explain more about the algorithm together with Patrick later on. But that's about it. And now we're going to have a look at what is um, going to happen throughout the next 45 minutes. Patrick, would you like to introduce our topic? Yeah, of course. So um, in today's webinar, we're going to look at um, four different topics. First, for everybody of who, who probably isn't uh, a client of Selma yet uh, or just got to know us, we're going to have a, a very quick wrap up about what Selma actually is, what we do. Um, then we're going to have uh, a view behind the scenes uh, of the Selma crew, so um, 
what what you're working on, what happened during the last couple of months, how is Selma working with prices. Um, then uh, we're going to get a little bit more technical, not too technical, though, don't be afraid. Uh, it's when also Stefan comes in and we're going to talk more um, about the actual um, money managing that Selma does. So how, how do we do that? What um, is the money managing based on? Um, so we're going to talk about Selma bot and the algorithm. And then in the last part, we also want to give you a little bit of a preview about what's coming up. At Selma, there are um, some pretty exciting things in the pipeline uh, that we'd like to, to share with you towards the end of this webinar. Yes, pretty exciting even, but we don't want to spoil too much, of course. Uh, so I'd say we get started with our first topic, mm -hmm. because uh, next to clients, uh, we definitely have some newer investors in here as well. So the big question for everyone who just joined um, is who is Selma? Patrick, would yes. you like to introduce us to our yes. Selma? Yes, of course. So as you know, you can see uh, Selma here on the slide. Um, uh, you can see our bot talking to you and what Selma does. Selma is um, a, a digital financial advisor. So uh, Selma helps you with all the topics around um, your money and your wealth and uh, helps you to do smart choices with your money and your wealth. Um, and that we do based um, on a chat that we have with you. So there is a, a chat where we learn more about you. Uh, we de develop a personalized plan for you. And then um, we help you in the area of investments, but we also help you in the area of um, the third pillar. So um, pension investments, uh, that's all combined in one um, service of Selma. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. I think that sums it up pretty nicely. <laughs> Uh, thank you. So, of course, uh, it's not all about the technology, the software. Uh, investing your money is also about the team, or in our case, the Selma crew, as we call ourselves um, on the human side of things. So we thought you might want to get to know us, the people, the whole team a bit better. You might have been in touch with uh, our expert teams uh, in terms of investment advice and so on and so forth, but maybe some of us are still new to you. Yeah, so you can see on the slide, um, uh, there are seven people uh, that's been the team in the beginning of 2020. Uh, We've also grown a little bit. So um, currently we are 10. That means there should be, ah, here they are, yes. <laughs> so there are uh, three additional people that joined our team. So there is, um, Thomas, who is uh, working in our operations, that means um, he works very closely with our clients. Um, some of you might even have met Thomas when you had questions about your personal setup, um, when you've been in our chat or when you've emailed back and forth um, uh, through your, um, your initial uh, checkups. Then there is Bang, who works in front-end development. Front-end is what you can see in our service. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody non-technical uh, as me explains that. So um, uh, he works on developing Selma further for you um, as clients and he's working on pretty exciting stuff at the moment. Um, we're going to share of, more of that later. Uh, and then there is Samar that has joined the team. Uh, Samar is our art director and is responsible how uh, to design and how things that you might see of Selma look like. Exactly. So what you can see on this slide is that we're actually quite a, a diverse team, also in terms of the area. So we have um, people with financial backgrounds, we have people that have strong backgrounds in tech, and then we are also um, people in communication. So I think it's quite a nice mix that we have. And talking about mix, we might also very, want to... <laughs> very good introduction to the next slide. <laughs> we might also want to introduce you to the favorite mixed drinks of all of our team members. So basically going in line with our um, Cocktails, Corona and Cape title. And to give you a bit more insights, these are the favorite cocktails and drinks of our team members. And now 
because it's not all about us, but also about you tonight. On the right side, you should see a poll uh, where we'd like to find out what you're drinking tonight. So please have fun. Just add your answers there. We'd definitely like to find out what you're planning. I see that we're still quite alone with our favorite cocktails, but this is fine. Water is the very well, I, I also have choice. water with the, with the cocktails. <laughs> well, good. That was it about the fun part of the team. Let's talk a little bit more about how we actually work together um, and how we take care of your money on a day-by-day -day basis. So uh, the company was founded in 2017 and we've always been a remote first company. Patrick, maybe you have some insights in how this was since the start. Yeah, I mean, we are an online um, a company, right? So also most of the communication with you wouldn't happen in a, in a dusty bank building, but um, in uh, chats or, or online. Uh, so we pretty much from the beginning, we've also been able to work from um, pretty much everywhere. So we didn't really have to change that much in, um, uh, in, the, in the recent days uh, where we just work from our home offices. Uh, I think also the second point, the close interaction uh, with, with you, our clients, that has been something that we um, did from the beginning. So. Um, uh, we always love to involve our clients in the product development, but especially now when um, things also at the market got a little bit rougher than they were before, uh, it is very important to us to, um, to keep this close interaction with, um, with clients, not only about uh, the further development of, um, uh, of Selma, but also about your, everybody's um, personal situation. So, um, no, we, we take care of setting up our financial profiles in the right way, uh, but then also uh, we are here to check them with you if, uh, if you want to have a closer look at them. Uh, we've already talked about uh, number three, right? We have um, added uh, Thomas to the team who brings another very long career in um, financial services into our team and can also give you expert advice if uh, there is, for example, something very specific in your financial situation that you would like to um, discuss with us. And then um, we are uh, giving, I think most of you know that, we are giving a little bit of a background and how we work and what we do, maybe also what we do when we're, when we're not at work um, in our uh, Instagram channels at um, Selma Finance. Exactly. I think on, on LinkedIn, on the blog, on Facebook, even you're going to find a lot of financial content that we are producing uh, and writing to help you understand the whole financial world a bit better. And Instagram is our behind the scenes channel where you can get to know our home offices and our like basically pets even and whatever we um, do on our team events online or offline. Yes. Um, that's it for uh, this part. Let's continue looking at how you, our clients, and we actually work together quite well during the last few months. And the first point says happy and successful clients. Happy clients is such a stereotype. That's why we like to say we'd also like to have successful clients because obviously we are here as your financial assistant to help you grow your investments. And basically, that's what we uh, really put an emphasis on. And we could basically see this in the numbers during the last few months. Even in the beginning of the whole Corona crisis, we had uh, more than 1,500 new investors. Maybe some of them are here tonight. Uh, joined Selma to start investing during a quite turbulent time, which was uh, super interesting and great to see. Yeah, I think what was very great to see uh, too is that um, the, that we built plans together with our clients that also been pretty crisis resistant, and that um, quite a few of you also took uh, this crisis as an opportunity to, uh, uh, to to invest more and to take advantage and to stick to their um, uh, monthly plans. So quite a few of our clients they invest 
every month, no matter what the markets do. Um, and they are just in a, in a state where they can also like sleep easily, <laughs> uh, 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 even though uh, it might be like a little bit more rough from, from time to time. That's very true. And I guess for the last point, that's more or less a milestone we had. It's it absolutely a milestone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we we kind of wanted to figure out what the perfect ratio is. How many coffees do we have to drink um, per new client? Um, so that, that means we've been drinking around 3,000 coffees. <laughs> the, um, I, I don't really want to know for how many of those I am responsible. I think I have done a lot of work on and this uh, specific KPI. <laughs> it's definitely something we measure on a quarterly basis a lot. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think that's it for this slide that we can move on, looking at the back a bit more, but more in terms of uh, the technical and product updates. I guess some of you will have experienced it and seen it in the service and seen the service grow. But here's a quick look back. The newest addition to our service was the Selma log, which um, we also published based on a lot of feedback where people wanted to see more in detail and in a more transparent way how Selma manages the money, what purchases, what sales are coming up, especially now in, in turbulent times. It's a good thing where the more information you see, the easier it is to relax. Yeah, I think it goes also in line with, with what we also do in, um, in this webinar. So uh, we, we want to open up the black box of investing for you more and more. And the Selma log was definitely a, a milestone there where we can give you more of an insight about what Selma does um, behind the scenes usually. Exactly. And uh, next up, there's also the sustainable investing. This has been with us since last year already for a long time in a, a beta phase. By now, uh, since the beginning of 2020, um, clients can also automatically switch in the service. So you can see how your profile might look like if you change to sustainable strategy. Furthermore, uh, we launched a Pillar 3A. Patrick talked about it in the beginning, integration. So not only you can can not only have a normal investment account but also pillar 3a account uh, since the end of last year with us and then a uh, newest addition is that we have a lower fee for the all investments that are above 150k yes so when you build investments and then you go over this threshold it also automatically becomes um, uh, becomes cheaper to to invest with us exactly and then we have one last point that is more about us than maybe about the bot and the algorithm, which is the next big topic we go to. Um, in the wake of the crisis, a lot of Swiss finance bloggers um, have gotten interested in online investment options and started writing reviews, comparisons, and so on. And that's a bit of a humble brag, but we're very happy we won these um, two awards um, you might want to check them out also to read through the comparisons and the reviews. Furthermore, schweizerfranke.com and investinghero.com both have uh, English speaking content. So, in case you're looking for a bit more in depth uh, advice and suggestions. Yeah, I think they're also uh, like, uh, I mean, we're of course very happy that we won those prizes, but yes. I they are in general quite a good resource to um, look at the different um, options that are out there in, in Switzerland and to see um, what kind of possibilities uh, you have to invest. It, it, it compares them on a, on a fair level and it's a great resource to figure out which of the different providers might be the right one for you. Exactly. And as an expert, it's always important to find information in English. I'm same for me. I'm also an expert living in a country where I don't speak the local language. So I'm usually very happy about that as well. Good. That means we've come to the main topic of tonight. We're going to have an in-depth view behind the scenes of how the Selma bot and our algorithm work. And because it, this is such a big topic, we uh, invited uh, Dr. Stefan Jeklin, uh, senior advisor and financial expert 
at Salma Finance, who should be dialed in right now. Yes. Here he is. Hi, everyone. Um, this is Stefan. Welcome, Stefan. Hi, Hi I'm nice Aaron. to and, and see you. I'm, I, I think more important than me is probably the drink. So the drink, <laughs> the drink is a, is a, is a moresque. It's a, that's a French, southern French drink. It's um, pasties with water and an almond syrup. Uh, delicious. Okay. Yeah, let's, delicious. Let's take a break and cheer to that. Cheers, yes, absolutely. Well, Wonderful. welcome. Stefan, very glad to um, have you here tonight. Um, we already know each other for quite some time now. You um, have been with Selma, I think, almost since um, since the beginning when we laid the, the founding stones for um, for the company. I think before um, we go into this um, more technical um, view about Selma's algorithm, maybe you could tell a little bit about what your motivation is to work with a, with a company like that. Yeah, thank you, thank you, Patrick. Uh, yes, indeed, uh, I've been I've been with Selma from very very early on, and and the reason I and the reason I did this was um, it's related a little bit to my past, not just a little bit, a lot. Uh, I've been working very long time in the financial services. Um, you know, I've been dealing with uh, wealth management, private banking, uh, etc and um, advise many of those companies. And, and what has annoyed me a lot working with the, the, the leading banks in this space is that, uh, well, they claim to do holistic wealth management and, and they do sometimes, but very often, particularly for the smaller and mid-sized clients, they actually, it, it, it's, it's, it's not really the case. It, it, they, they tend to try to put you into buckets of, uh, you know, someone goes into bucket A, bucket A has this characteristic, someone goes in bucket C and this has this characteristic. And I always felt that, hey, I am, I'm different. I'm not really fitting in any of these buckets. And I don't know how it is for you, but uh, for me, for me that's, that's been very clear. I'm, I'm different from Patrick. I'm different from Karina. Uh, we, we are all different. Uh, and that's that's where I I you know I really liked the approach that uh, Patrick and his team have to have essentially a digital wealth manager that that has the capability and ability to to really understand each of the individuals and prepare an individual portfolio which only he or she has for that person. That's uh, that's essentially been the driver for me being with you. Excellent. We're very glad to have you. And I think you also made a perfect introduction into the next topic we're going um, uh, we, we're gonna to talk about. We, we talked about um, the individual portfolios. And I think what we're um, going to spend the next couple of minutes on is how we arrive there, right? So very true. Uh, so we're going to talk about the bot and the algorithm. And, and basically, we could also have ordered um, uh, this list because those things are things that we make in a certain um, sequence. So there is one, one point before we even started, I think, talking about the portfolio and um, where you should invest and what those investments are. Um, the first point is that we need to get to, to know you. And then from there, we take the next steps. We look at the risk. We look at the markets and then adjust adjust those things constantly but i think let's go with the with, with the first topic first the, the first thing that selma needs to do is to um really understand your you and your uh, financial situation and this is the the basic or the fundament where we where we start to build all the other things that come later on top yes i mean this is this is this is key without an understanding of the individual investor how can you actually yeah wealth management you simply you simply can't and uh you know what 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 makes us different uh there, there are many different elements that have a material role in your you know whatever is best for you from a portfolio perspective it really starts with the more obvious one is, is of course you know how much how much wealth do you actually own how much financial wealth do you own but it also matters for example if you hold um or own um, real estate 
uh, you know, an apartment or something like that. Because if you do, then you should certainly not invest much more into, into that specific area because typically that's a large amount of your wealth. Uh, but also other elements matter. For example, you do need uh, cash very soon for a specific expense. Uh, that matters because it is a, it's, a, it's, a, it's something that you have to keep ready. Uh, but also elements like age, for example, matters greatly. Uh, I take an example. If someone on, your, on the call is 25, then that someone has you know, roughly 40 years of um, work ahead of him or herself, which means it's a steady stream of income. And that is an important element of capital. You can't spend on it now, but you know you will have it. Whereas a person who is one month away from retirement, 65, one month away from retirement, it's actually one single month of income or potential saving left. And after that, you enter into the disabling space. This is, if those two persons would have the same wealth, they would still have very, very different portfolio allocations because of that element that we call the human capital. Yeah, you just explained, I just wanted to say now you, you explained this like difficult word uh, uh, of human capital in a, in a very nice, um, a very nice way. And the way how it influences the risk is that, of course, if um, I'm investing 2000 Swiss francs with Selma and I'm able to put 2000 Swiss francs aside from my salary every month for the next 40 years, I can have a, a very different risk profile. Um, then, then somebody that has um, a hundred thousand francs and it's all they have and they will not earn anymore because they they've already uh, they're already in retirement and um, that would then shape as you said the, the risk um, and how much money you can invest in a, in a very different way exactly Patrick and you know the, the on the one hand side you have got those assets that we just talked about uh, but on the other side, you actually also have got things that you owe someone. That can be a mortgage, it can be a credit, things that you will have to pay, things that actually uh, you know, are offsetting part of uh, the asset side that you have. And so what, what, what we do in the background, and you really don't notice it because yeah, otherwise it would be way too boring, uh, but we are, we are essentially building your own balance sheet in the background. Because that balance sheet, what you have on the assets, what you have on the liabilities, that is so instrumental to how your portfolio, your personal portfolio should actually look like. And what Stefan just said is very true. Like we, you don't see this balance sheet, of course, in general, but um, building the bridge to what you see in the Selma service, you do go through a chat with Selma who gets to know you and asks you all kinds of questions in a nice, in a friendly, in an open way. So she can build this in the background. Yes, exactly. So, uh, I mean, you see parts of the balance sheet. What we don't show owe you is the, the human capital as a number, what we calculate out of that. Because as you said, Stefan, it would probably be far too too complicated and far too overwhelming, but still quite an important part um, of like, e even though you cannot access that money, um, it's still something that you will realize over the next, uh, over the next years. And I think that basically ends, I guess we can read here on the slide with the result of building this balance sheet first answers the question, how much money can you even invest? How much money should you invest? And then I think if it's okay with you, we can move on to the we next slide. On, yes. yes. So the, I mean, the first question, even maybe before how much money you can invest is, should you even invest, right? Mm -hmm. Because there are certain situations, uh, one very classical, you're gonna spend all the money you, you're gonna generate in the next like year within like the next one and a half year. So it's not very clever. To, uh, to spend that money that is reserved for a car or for holiday or whatever, um, because it's simply not enough time. Um, 
But then on the other hand, it's very clever to invest the money that you earn now and don't need to touch. So the money that like grows and builds over time. And that's the, the first, first question. Can you invest and how much? And then the next one, and that's what you see on this slide, is then uh, if you're able to invest, at what kind of a risk should you invest? And that's also a result of this um, balance sheet. So what Selma is looking at is how strong is this balance sheet and um, how, how well is this looking, right? And if you have a very strong uh, balance sheet uh, that comes from um, you're, you're young, you're able to save a lot of money, you probably already started building, um, building somewhere else, you, you have um, your cash uh, buffer covered for emergencies, uh, and then you end up in a very strong uh, situation. And the balance sheet is one part. So the balance sheet is what we say gives you the ability where you say, okay, like I'm able, I could invest at a very high risk. Exactly, and the, and, and the second the, the second element is uh, is your willingness, uh, your 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 you know your aversion effectively, because some people have a great balance sheet, have you know significant amount of wealth, but you really get sleepless nights if they have mm -hmm. risk in yeah. their portfolio. And really, there is nothing bad or nothing good about it. We are very agnostic to this because every one of us is a little bit different in terms of how he has handled risk, how, he's, um, you know, how, how he accepts those types of risks. And that's called the risk aversion. So what, uh, what Patrick was just man mentioning, on the one hand side, you have the risk ability, so what you could actually afford. And on the other hand, it is your subjective, your personal you know, acceptance of risk. And those two elements, those two elements, risk aversion and risk ability, they both enter into the, your personal portfolio allocation. Yeah, they enter into the allocation. And I think the uh, aversion is quite a difficult uh, word, but you explained it way, uh, in, a, in a good way. So it, it is like, can you sleep at night if now the markets crash due to Corona and all of a sudden there is like 20%, 30% less that you, uh, that you um, own? Is this something that would make you feel in a bad way and would make you react and sell? Or is it something that you just accept as part of, the, uh, of your long-term investment plan that you have looked at? So it's like a risk that you have looked at and that you accept for a, um, for a certain while. And I think what's, what's quite important there is that um, Selma also puts uh, that willingness and that ability or your risk factor in um, perspective to the amount that you invest. So if you have, let's say, 100,000 Swiss francs, and that's um, the total amount that you hold on your, um, your account, you will probably not have the same risk aversion for 2,000 francs that you invest or for the whole 100,000. Because if you lose half of the 2,000, it's a thousand. If you lose half of the whole hundred thousand, it's fifty thousand. And um, as a as a normal human, you would react differently to this kind of loss because it has different magnitude. So what what Selma also does, it's um, dynamically adjusting the risk dependent on how big of a part of your wealth you actually invest. So um, if you go through this whole setup process, and um, in the end you decide on the amount that you're actually going to invest that has, again, a part on the risk you're then getting. And, and the result of the, the ability, the willingness, and also the investment amount, um, that gives us a, a, a score, basically, it's a, it's a number. And this number defines how much of your wealth can be invested in a, in a risky way. And only then, when we know uh, the share that should be invested uh, in, a, in a risky way, then we look at how should this now be invested, and I think that brings us to the to the next uh, to the next topic: how we then start to build uh, your your investment portfolios. Yes, and that's uh, there. I think we have to keep in mind something really important when we come to the question. Yeah, we have understood. Just repeating, we have understood you, designed, you model who you are. Uh, we have. Uh, that the risk, the willingness, 
with Vividum, come to the investment part now, there's really... That's in the service, just uh, one thing there. After the chat, you basically got your profile, but you also got the plan, right? You got the suggestion of what investment products Salma picked for you, how risky are they going to be, what's the constellation, and I'm going to give back to you, Stefan, because that's the page in the service. And, and now we're coming to the to the investment. Um, and, um, you know, many of you might now ask the question, well, what securities do you, individual securities do you invest in? And um, there is something that uh, we feel needs really to be clearly communicated to everyone. There are various hundred thousands of professional people around the globe who, like for example, Patrick, who did yeah, I've been one of them, a financial exactly. analyst. Yes. I was doing it as well. My wife is doing it. Lots of people do it. I mean, there's, it's, <laughs> there's literally not just hundreds of thousands. Worldwide, there, there are millions of people who are doing nothing else the whole day than trying to figure out which securities are cheaper, more expensive, etc. And uh, if, uh, and then the, in addition to that, there are uh, a lot of the computing power. Sometimes people forget about that, but some of the most uh, advanced computing power is actually helping hedge funds and the likes in financial services to do precisely the same thing again. So what actually happened is that within very, very short periods of time, and I'm talking fractions of seconds, uh, misvaluations, things that are not properly priced, are immediately erased in the market. Uh, when new information comes into the market, you know, whatever, an oil shortage or whatever, whatever that is, immediately this gets priced into the prices. Uh, hence, it is extremely difficult to make money from stock selection and pretty much any academic would actually tell you it is not only very difficult, in fact, impossible because there are lots of studies that show precisely that and actually yeah, it, it is not possible in a consistent way, consistent manner to make money from stock selection or security selection. And that is, by the way, the reason why the leading pension funds in uh, all countries, and particularly in Switzerland, that's the case as well, they invest into so-called passive uh, assets. Passive assets are, for example, ETFs, that's another synchronism on the previous page, it's called exchange traded fund. And all that exchange traded fund typically is doing is, is, is imitating a specific market index or a specific market price out there. So for example, an index for the Swiss SMI or an index for the Dow Jones, whatever, and many of those ETFs exist. But they are not actively managed where you select individual stocks, but all they try is to mimic that asset. And pension funds uh, and those big institutional investors have realized because it is uh, on, you know, on a continuous basis not possible to make money from stock selection, it's actually more expensive, uh, that therefore they invest into passive instruments. Yes, so um, then uh, still when you invest passively, it's then the, the question is, okay, like how do you do that, right? So how, how from your um, risk that you should do, how do we end up going out there and where we should have this? Um, uh, the first thing that we do there is to, to figure out how you should passively um, invest into, into the global markets. And um, what we use for that is something like, um, I'm also we're using a, <laughs> a complicated word, is capitalization. It's not that difficult to, to explain, actually. Um, you look at, you, you take the sum of all investments in the entire world. So you, every uh, Swiss franc or dollar or euro that is invested in the entire world, you sum it up and you look how it does when you put all of this together, how is this money spread? So, how much is invested in the 
U.S. In Europe and into, into Asia. And that is also the basis of the portfolio at that time. Um, uh, because we uh, um, uh, expect markets to be efficient. That means the money is very, very fast to move between the different regions of the world. And what then usually moves there where it can produce the most returns. And that's why, why the capitalizations are a base for that. And they are a basis to, to build them. Um, Good. Now, now, obviously, a, a, a key question is going to be asked. Well, you invest passively, right? Um, and yet, Selma is doing actually things. Is making transactions. Why? Why does it do those transactions? So I think it's a very good question. There's actually two main reasons why it does. On the one hand side, because of what we've just discussed. Situations on the balance sheet may change, on your balance sheet may change, also due to market movements. And the second is, that's a pure investment side, is while we do not believe in security selection, and we have good, very valid reason not to believe in, because that is actually consensus with pretty much any analysis in the market. We do, however, strongly believe in asset allocation meaning how much actually you put money into you know for example equity markets versus fixed income markets versus money markets versus precious metals those are it's not a security selection topic but it is a topic around how you allocate across those different markets and uh, Patrick has mentioned the overall approach to this. And what we do in the asset allocation, uh, that, that's where we actually, you know, overweight and underweight relative to what Patrick has just been lined out. Yeah, it also means, um, asset allocation also means, are you even investing into the market right now? Yes or no? So are you going full speed? <laughs> Um, or are you um, uh, like going into the markets with uh, with the handbrake, so you hold more cash that you don't invest currently? And um, how how do you measure that? I think now we're gonna go to one of the like other of the three um, three buzzwords of our today's seminar. So how do you measure if you should currently go full speed or not full speed in the different markets? Is um, that we look at this? So and the and uh, now what the what the hell is a cape and, and now <laughs> especially what the hell is a cape me reversion yeah, even up to something okay but but so here we have got to start with an apology because in in, in <laughs> principle it is really selma's conviction that we should not throw uh you know funny strange abbreviations at people um we made an exception for 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 this webinar uh also because it painted so nice with the name. We gave it to other exactly. But uh, but but bear with us for, for I'd say about 60, 90 seconds and you'll understand that, that <laughs> it was 60, 20 that, minutes. That this, no is, this is half as complicated as it sounds. Let me just explain this first. What I, with the cape, I start with the, it is called cyclically adjusted price to earnings ratio. Now you have not, you may not have understood anything. And I don't blame you, but it's actually really easy. <laughs> Frankly, it's one of the ways of financial markets to confuse people. But let me just try. It's actually simple. Price to earning. That is effectively the price of an asset to what it comes out of the asset, the return, the, 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 the money that comes out of that asset. And you will certainly recognize that any asset's price must bear some sort of a relationship to what that asset produces. Well, that's exactly this. That's nothing else than this price to earnings ratio. It is a measure of value. Now, what the heck is cyclically adjusted? Well, because effectively, if you do this price to earning, then this can heavily fluctuate a lot uh, around. And there is a lot of noise, you know, random stuff in those numbers. The cyclically adjusted simply means 
that it gets flat out we're taking averages that's it and if that means when the economy goes a little bit up and a little bit down uh, it, it's not always should you adjust the price of the assets right um, as, a, as an example your your house uh, price maybe doesn't uh, like you you're not following every movement of your house price because your economy goes up and down but there is a the, the, the price that it's that it's worth and then there is also the, the income that you would produce with this house that would then be the earnings so it's how much you pay for for a certain thing in relation to the earnings you can exactly produce. and what what Patrick just mentioned is in this chart this is this uh, this uh, you know curve here going up and down every point along that curve is such a price earning that uh, Patrick has mentioned. And in this case, it has been cyclically adjusted. But, uh, and now comes, so far it's just thinking experience. But now comes the key element that drives our asset allocation when we overweight and underweight something. While in financial services, you find absolutely overwhelming evidence that security selection is not possible on a continuous basis, you find also overwhelming evidence, and it's pretty much the only thing you find overwhelming evidence on, that values are for some time over or under an average where it ultimately gets back to this. This is, you know, in common language, it's what we all know. We all know that prices, when they go too much up, they will ultimately come down as well. And prices that are very cheap, they also go up again. We don't know when. Uh, none of us really knows when, but we know that it will. And that information that it will is something that we use in self -market. It's also the beauty when you invest for the long term. Because as long as you invest, as more secure is that the price is going to go back to the average because it, um, it, it's, it's proven that, that it does so that things that are too expensive, that they will become cheaper and things that are too cheap, that they are, will become, um, uh, that they will become more, uh, more expensive. And in this line, you said every point on this line, that's a cape. And what we have here in the middle, this um, dotted line, that is the average where it would eventually come, uh, come back to. And I think um, an example of that uh, is also how we have invested in the, uh, in the last years and also throughout uh, the crisis. So already in, in 2019, we have seen markets where um, it was from, from those cape points very clear that we're above the line. So in pretty much all the markets, the, the prices, they were too expensive. And um, we knew we, we didn't know when. Um, but we knew that at some point the prices will come back to average. That's why we have uh, invested with one foot on the brake, with more uh, with more cash. And then when the when the prices were um, were correcting uh, and became more more fair, uh, then we have moved that money back into the into the financial markets. And I think also to tie it in to the summer service again. Uh, you can see here in this uh, white um, box, CAPE measures the over and under valuations of markets. In the communication, we always talk about over and under valuations of markets. So basically, the new transactions show up, that Patrick and Stefan mentioned before, usually based on one of these measurements. And that's what you will see popping up and coming up in the future. I'm working with Selma. Uh, we're going to let you know about this. Uh, also in the, the update, shifts coming up when you see that we have made adjustments because of the valuations this is what happened exactly yep and then but, maybe to to summarize by the way, i just just would like to raise one important element as well mm -hmm. which is the, this undervaluation overvaluation we will not like a normal asset manager, have a committee that does the decisions. That's a good point. Yes, that's a good <laughs> really point. Good point. It's not Steph and me drinking a, a cocktail exactly. together and discussing. It's the Wednesday evening. Selma monitoring that. 
That's Selma's job. Yeah, and you can see um, when you look at uh, in our service, when you look at your um, at the products that we bought for you, they have a different price every single time, right? Uh, so uh, those data points they they change, and what Selma does is continuously calculating those ratios in the background, and it's calculating them for for your portfolio to see if transactions are needed to to adjust them to the to the new truth that is changing every day on the financial markets. Exactly. Yes, so we, we kind of jumped into that already. Um, so we looked at how um, we, we look at your situation to, to figure out what, what kind of investment amounts and what kind of risk is good for you. How we then look at the market to build this passive portfolio as a, as a second layer. And then how we adjust to the markets based on the capes as a, as a third layer on top. And I, I think what that's important here is that this, of course, a constant process. So whenever like one of those points change in the data, that the whole process would be recalculated. So, um, and it might be triggered by any of this. It might be triggered by you buying a house and having this house moved into your balance sheet or by you having a change uh, in your income, which then is a change in your, uh, in your human capital that changes your balance sheet. Or it might simply just be um, that um, something in the market changes and the price changes. And the uh, work of Selma is to continuously update and follow that process to, to adjust your portfolio. Wonderful. That means we're at the end of our bot and algorithm part. Are there any last comments? Otherwise, I'm going to move on to the next part. Thank you for staying with us throughout this. <laughs> Uh, also, maybe to the to the chat, uh, if you have more specific questions, um, uh, uh, maybe even more into the, the the financial part of it, you can ask them in the, in the chat, and we will um, follow up on them. Yes, that's perfect. And uh, now we're gonna move on to an outlook, basically um, something that's gonna happen in the next few months, in the next year. Uh, you might already be looking forward to, might even have requested uh, one of these uh, next updates. So first, uh, this is another hint at the Open Selma community, at our contributors, contributors Facebook group, in case you're not part of it yet. We definitely urge you to um, look it up and join it because here we are posting surveys, we are, po we are asking for feedback, uh, we're usually sharing early drafts, so definitely feel free to join. And then we also have the open roadmap where we um, track and update what we work on at all times. The One of the two big updates that's coming is you might know our referral program. So the invite a friend program at Selma. If you're a client or even a, a user of Selma, you can invite a friend. And once they start investing as well, you can, you can use this scheme and program to grow your investments with us because it means that uh, you're going to earn Selma's fee on 5,000 francs for 12 months. These are 34 francs onto your account for each friend you invite. This is going to accumulate. You can earn more money the more friends you invite. And of course, also your friends are going to start for free. But, and that's why it's here, uh, we are going to up the game for this program. So there are going to be more interesting bonuses or um, rewards coming up. And especially in the contributor group, we're soon going to ask for feedback. And now, the big surprise. So, uh, shall we do the drum rolls? <laughs> the drum roll. <laughs> um, exactly. So many of you have hoped for it. The app, it's coming. A first version of the iPhone app, soon after also of the Android app is coming this autumn. It's honestly most one of the most requested updates of all times. We've already started working on it. I think it's the most uh, requested update. Of, the most. Of, <laughs> the, uh, and it also shows that we're caring about all the feedback we're getting and the wishes we're getting from you. Um, and that we're looking at them in the product development. And this is something that I'm personally really excited about to also um, have uh, 
Selma on, on my phone and in my pocket. And it's something where we certainly also want to invite you as a, a part of our product development. So if you're interested to, to test, to um, give feedback, to share your inputs, um, uh, that's something that is very valuable for us. And I think Karina already said the way how we do that is that you can become part of the, the open community we have mentioned before. That's very true. And also, if you go to this open roadmap, you can find all the links on our website. You can see all the actual feedbacks we got. We track them, we add them there. So we won't forget word by word what you actually ask. But that brings us to the end of this evening. We've hit it at 55 minutes and I'm very happy about this webinar. Thank you also, Stefan, for joining. This is one of the first times we really dove into the algorithm part. Uh, it was very exciting. As mentioned from Patrick before, please continue asking us questions in the chat. We're going to follow up with you after the webinar. If you have feedback on the content of the webinar, please also write us in live chats in the contributor group or simply via email. We are very happy to also take in new suggestions and put together new webinars. Excellent. All Thank you so say. much. Okay. Cheers. 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 And goodbye. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Bye bye.